What's up guys? This is Faris and welcome back to my Geek Vlog. Happy New Year everybody! We're now at the final video of Hulk Topic and we're gonna take a look back at the reboot that sets in the MCU of Phase 1 which is The Incredible Hulk. the release of the first film, producer and writer James Sheamus was planning to write a treatment for the sequel which would have continued the story featuring new villains for Hulk to fight with. He considers both the Abomination and the leader as the villains in the sequel, and he also wanted to feature the Grey Hulk. The movie was going to be released in May 2005, but as the years passed by, Universal did not meet with the deadline. This would lead to the rise of Marvel Studios, who they got the rights of the characters as well as providing the budget to produce and Universal Pictures distributing the film which means both studios share the rights of the character. It was at this moment that newcomer producer Kevin Feige, who was an executive producer of Hulk, and previous producer Avi Arad and Gil N. Hurt decided to depart from Ang Lee's style of filming to continue the franchise, which means the movie is being rebooted and previous actors from the first movie would not be returning to reprise their roles except Stan Lee and Lou Ferrigno. Since they depart Ang Lee's world, Marvel and Universal eventually hired a new director and writer. Transporter 1 and 2 director Louis Leterrier and X-Men 2 and 3 writer Zach Penn, who was once involved in writing earlier Hulk script, to be the writer of this movie. Eventually we got new cast and the movie was released in 2008 right after Iron Man, and how did it turn out? It was pretty damn good for a Hulk movie. Even though it was way better than the first movie, there are some things that I want to talk about and maybe nitpicks too. So let's get started by talking about the cast and characters. Like the first film, the casting in this movie are great picks for the role. Edward Norton was a fantastic choice for the role of Bruce Banner. Just so you know, he wasn't the first choice for the role. Director Louis Leterrier initially wanted Mark Ruffalo to play the role, but ended up getting casted in The Avengers when Norton decided not to return. But if he does end up in this movie, we would have gotten a trilogy like the rest, if there weren't any rewrites. In this movie, we have a character who is struggling to control his inner monster as well as finding a way to cure his condition after the accident he got many years early. Edward Norton delivers an astounding performance as the struggling lone scientist Bruce Banner, and his performance really got into me and made me follow his character wherever he goes. In case you guys don't know, Edward Norton rewrote parts of Zack Pence's script, and it delivers pretty damn well, especially putting up with this epic scene. Hulk! Smash! Sadly, after the film's release, he's the second actor to depart the role after just one movie. But I'll take that for a reason because he's one serious actor and hard to work with. Betty Ross is now being played by Liv Tyler. It's pretty ironic that since the first actress who plays the role plays on-screen sister with this actress, are now having the pleasure of sharing the role. Betty plays a prominent role in this movie in helping Bruce's journey finding a cure for his condition starting from the moment he came back after five years of refuge. She does have an expanded role having connection to Bruce as both colleague and love interest from beginning to end, especially for that moment where she was with Hulk at the grotto, other than whatever the hell she does in the first attempt. General Ross is now being played by William Hurt. I could get over the whole him being a tool for the banner starting with the father then the main character in the first attempt, but in this movie, the character ignored that part and his story is being retold as he was supposed to be in the comics. A military general who works with Banner on a super soldier project with gamma radiation that went wrong. After falling apart working together making Bruce losing his love of Betty, he has the motivation of wanting to take out both Bruce and Hulk in order for him to use his DNA to make it as a weapon for the military, as well as motivating our new character who would eventually becomes a bigger threat to both Bruce and General Ross. Enter Emil Blonsky, aka The Abomination, played by Tim Roth. We all wanted to see Hulk going against someone with equal and greater strength and power. This is where Emil Blonsky came and worked with General Ross on a mission to capture Bruce and bring him back to the military. When he fails for the first time, he decides to get himself injected with Super Soldier Serum and he loses again. Then when he succeeds on capturing Bruce, he wants more than just one thing. That's the moment where he gets obsessed with wanting to have the same power as Hulk. That's where he decides to get his blood mixed up with Bruce's and get himself exposed with gamma radiation and he becomes the Abomination. This is a villain we can understand on why he wants to do such a thing, from the moment he joins a mission with General Ross in the military, battling the Hulk, and gets obsessed on becoming like him. I would say that Abomination is a strong villain to Hulk, and a big threat. He's one of the villains that I like in the MCU. 
We also got other characters making appearance like Samuel Stearns, played by Tim Blake Nelson, who helps Bruce curing his condition and turns Blonsky into the Abomination. Then later gets knocked out, foreshadowing his transformation into the leader, which I have no idea when will he return. Then we got small appearances of Ty Burrell as Dr. Leonard Sampson, Paul Souls, who's known for voicing Bruce Banner in the 60s cartoon, playing Stan the Pizza Chef, a cameo from the late Stan Lee, may he rest in peace, Lou Ferrigno as a security guard for the second time, and Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark, who appears at the end of the movie. So let's move on to the plot and action of this movie. There's been plenty of improvements since the first attempt. Since this movie is a reboot, the story looks like it was last picked off where the first film left out, which was in South America. However, this movie's plot and story comes with a new backstory and origin for Bruce Banner and Hulk, which was played during the opening of the film. The plot and story is a great retelling of Bruce Banner's origin and his journey from a scientist to becoming the Hulk. He deals with many problems after his accident, going city to city, which he ended up in Brazil working in a soda factory. While working there, he was also struggling to find a cure for his condition, all the while the military and its new member Emil Blonsky is tracking him down to take him back in order for the military to use his DNA as a weapon. When Banner's condition is cured, Blonsky has gone too far with the super soldier he used, and he's obsessed with having Hulk's power and ability, and so he eventually becomes the Abomination. So Bruce Banner has to use the Hulk to fight off his enemy, resulting in an epic hero versus villain battle. The film's plot was inspired by the graphic novel Hulk Grey by writer Jeff Loeb. It was a retelling of Hulk's first appearance. Most of the film's scenes pays homage to the graphic novel, especially that scene of Hulk and Betty at the grotto and that scene where Hulk's transformation starting with grey color before becoming fully green. Hell, there was even a deleted scene where Bruce talked about his personality issues with Doc Samson which also comes straight from the graphic novel. And that scene only appears on the trailer for God's sake. I have no idea why they cut that scene out, somebody better explain how that happens. The Hulk's origin in this movie takes inspiration from both the main and ultimate Marvel Universe Hulk, with the experiment of gamma radiation mixing with Super Soldier formula. There was also a homage to the 70s TV show with the gamma equipment chair and its music. The action scenes in this movie are done very well, from the moment Hulk appears in a soda factory beating off a few men, to battling the military in the field of Culver University, and that epic one-on-one -on -one battle between Hulk and the Abomination in Harlem, New York. Every scene of Hulk and Abomination are done in motion capture performance. Believe it or not, Edward Norton and Tim Roth performed the Hulk and Abomination and motion capture. However, the good stuff stops there. I know having Hulk running around beating the shit out of military and fighting his equal opposite is pretty damn good, but looking back at it, I think he really should do more than that. I mean, it's the Incredible Hulk. There should be plenty of room for him to do a lot of incredible stuff. I know it sounds like a nitpick, but then again the movie needs to shift focus on Bruce Banner and his condition in order to set up the big climax at the final act. I gotta say, the Hulk design in this movie is by far my favorite out of all the three that is done in film. I mean, no offense to Mark Ruffalo's one, his Hulk design is pretty neat in its own way to fit with the current MCU tone. When it comes to this Hulk, the design is pretty unique and creative. Abomination's design looks pretty threatening, scary, and intimidating at the same time. He does represent that monstrous look like he is in the comics, but in a different way. There was an abomination design that looks a bit close to the comic, with a more lizard-esque amphibian mixed tone, but it got rejected and I guess the movie does fit with the final design in order to look similar to Hulk as its opposite. However, with all the final concept arts that was used in this film, sometimes the effects kinda change from looking real to look like coming straight out of a video game. Well, maybe that's just me. Well, most of you guys have different opinions when it comes to this film's visual. For those of you guys who don't know, this movie's visual effects and CG were done by Rhythm and Hughes Studios, the company known for working on the visuals for Babe and Life of Pi. It was director Louis Leterrier's decision to hire Rhythm and Hughes Studios instead of Industrial Lights and Magic, aka ILM, who did the visuals for the first Hulk movie and the rest of the MCU films. Not really a good idea, but that's just fine. Now to be fair, if this movie could look real visually, Marvel could have convinced Leterrier to choose ILM during pre- or post-production in order to create the visuals that would look realistic. So yeah, the story is pretty well told, the score was brilliantly done, the Hulk and Abomination designs are great, the effects were okay, and the action scene is pretty cool. And now let's get to the bigger question. Since Iron Man, Captain America, and Thor gets a trilogy, why didn't this movie get a sequel and made into a trilogy? Well, for obvious reasons. 
The movie made less money than Iron Man and becomes the lowest grossing MCU film to date, but did get to surpass the first movie. On the other hand, Marvel had a tough time working with Norton because he wanted more creative freedom for his love and passion of the character. He even planned on writing a draft for the second installment. While working on the Avengers, negotiations between Norton and Marvel broke down and he was recast by the director's original choice for the role, Mark Ruffalo. I guess Marvel learned their lesson on picking an actor who was a pain in the ass on set. After the release of The Avengers, audiences seem to embrace Hulk being a team player and wants to see his character interact more with The Avengers and its future members. So Marvel decided to scrap the sequel ideas and continue his story with The Avengers and other MCU solo films like his cameo in Iron Man 3 and a supporting role in Thor Ragnarok. Which means most of the Incredible Hulk characters didn't make a return in future MCU films like General Ross did in Captain America Civil War and Avengers Infinity War. The only thing that this movie foreshadows a sequel is that one scene where Samuel Stearns is about to become the leader. Actor Tim Blake Nelson and director Louis Leterrier was contracted to return for a sequel that would feature the leader as the main villain, alongside Tim Roth as Emil Blonsky becoming human again after his first transformation. The sequel would have also featured the return of Doc Samson, played by Ty Burrell, becoming the Gamma superpower hero like in the comics. But unfortunately, Marvel decided to scrap those ideas and end Samuel Stern's story by just shooting him in the leg and kept him in S.H.I.E.L.D., Blonsky being in prison in a chain box, and Doc Samson back to whatever the hell he's doing. However, producer Kevin Feige and actor Mark Ruffalo last added that a standalone Hulk movie is a possibility in the future. Well, maybe after Avengers Endgame, we might get a standalone Hulk movie in MCU's Phase 4 with a brand new storyline. Who knows? It might be possible we see Hulk having a prominent role in an MCU Phase 4 film. As of now, Bruce Banner's place is always with his science bro and his teammates, which means we would never see him alone. So that was The Incredible Hulk, in my opinion, is a worthy adaptation of the Marvel character than the first attempt. Even after the release of The Avengers and other MCU solo films, till this day, The Incredible Hulk still serves as a great retelling of Bruce Banner's origin from a scientist to becoming the Hulk, even though the film's duration was that short and it didn't make much money like Iron Man did. Yet, I was kinda upset to see Norton not reprising the role of Bruce Banner in The Avengers, but I'm glad that Mark Ruffalo took over the role and makes us continue enjoying the character in the MCU. And we'll all be ready when there's another standalone Hulk movie or seeing the character having a prominent role in an MCU Phase 4 film right down the corner. So what do you guys think looking back at The Incredible Hulk? Do you think it's a worthy adaptation or do you think it's meh? Be sure to share your thoughts and comments below. So guys, thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe to check out more videos like this and others. Also, don't forget to follow me on social media for more updates and I'll see you guys next time.